If you really stop to think about it, there are a lot of cam locks in the world today. And with a lot of cam locks being out there in the world today, there's also a ton of manufacturers who make them. And there's a lot of different code series, there's all sorts of stuff. And so because of that, it can make it tricky from time to time to work with cam locks, especially when a customer has like an existing key and they want to continue to use that key. Now you could get lucky and it could be one of the real popular ones. And by just using this one kit, well, you can almost make everything work. Let's give it the 80-20, right? This one kit will work on about 80% of cam locks out there. So I really want to dive into this a little bit and I want to get to the reality, right? Because everything, when you look at all the different spacing and depth information and code series, it can be overwhelming. And frankly, you can really feel like, oh my gosh, this is like a, a, a puzzle that I'm never going to be able to put together. But that's actually not the case. And it's a lot more simple than you think. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and put the camera up top here and let's go over some stuff together. And my goal is by the end of this, you're gonna feel much more confident dealing with just random cam lock keys. Let's do it. All right, so this is everything we're gonna be working with today, all right? We're gonna be using this multifunction complex uh, little Fort Rekeen kit. It looks really small, but I'll tell you what, it's nice and powerful here. Um, we're gonna set that aside. Um, next up here, I have two different locks. So I have this, uh, this compact stock lock. All right, and you can see it's the code 217. Let's go ahead and grab um, this out. Oh, looks like even a wafer fell out here. I can fix that. We've got our keys. And then lastly here, I actually have um, a different type of lock. And inside of it, I'm actually just gonna grab these keys, all right? So this is, uh, let me set this aside here. So this is a ES133 um, code series Y11 key. So the lock really isn't important in this, just grabbing just a uh, just this random ES1333, or ES133 um, key, all right? No, of course, you let me put this wafer back in. And uh, if I were to take this and, uh, Put it in here and grab it. Of course, you know it's going to work, right? This is the lock that it was made for. But by using, oh, let me get it out of there. There we go. All right. But by using this little this little uh, kit here, we're actually going to set these um, keys aside, and we're actually going to pin this lock to this key, which is an ES. 133. Now these are completely different code series. As a matter of fact, I'm going to pull up on the screen right now. Um, you can see the space and depth information for both of these. And you can see that they're different. And that's really where the power comes in on this. And um, you'll find this interesting. So is what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to take this out. And I'm just going to take out all of these wafers really quick here. All right, so I'm just move this up. I'm just going to put them down here for now. So is what we're going to be doing is we're gonna key it up to this. So I'm just gonna sight read this, okay? Um, you know, it's really the best you can do when you're using a kit like this that is not the same. So let me move it down so you can see it here. And so hopefully, let's see if I get them all right or not. So is what we're gonna do here, I'm gonna look at it. So that to me, when there's no cut on it, that's a one, right? If it's not a one, we're gonna run into some problems, but let's see. Put a spring in, take a number one. Try it out. As you can see there, looks great. All right, so next up here, if we're looking at this key. All right, let's give it a try here. And there you go, as you can see, I mean, it actually looks uh, great. Let's go to the next. So that looks like probably a two. All right, so we're kind of in between the two of them there, so let's try a two. Grab a spring. Why not? Looks good. Last but not least, now I'm gonna put the key in, in here and see it, because we're kind of at a cuss, right? The space scene on this is a little different here. Um, so what I wanna do is look, I'm gonna look down and kind of see where it's hitting. All the other ones have actually hit pretty gosh darn good there. This last one's a little off. So I actually think it's actually right on that tip. Okay, it's right on that tip. So I'm gonna, it's gonna be a one here. Looks 
good. Now, let's go ahead and put it in the uh, cam lock here. As you can see, it's in there. Look at that, it turns great. So let's talk about this for a second, okay? So now, I'm not saying that this is the how to do it every single time, all right? But you're gonna find situations where you don't have the right kit, you don't know what the space and depth is. Maybe you look it up in your um, like genera code. You can't find the code series. It's confusing. Um, it's going to happen. All right. We can all. We, it's easy to talk about when things go perfect. But what's really important is when you have a job to do. You have your available resources, and you need to get it done for the customer. All right. And this is a perfect example of two different manufacturers keys, two different code series. Um, as you can see from when I pulled it up, when we pull them up on the screen, you can see that they're different, right? They're just downright different. Yet we were still able to pin this um, or to key this uh, cam lock up to the customer's key without really any problems by just sight reading it. And the truth is, this is what it boils down to. The tolerances in these cam locks are just very, very big, okay? They're a very large tolerance, and that's why you're able to do this. So I just want you to take this information, use it as you will. You might find a situation where you need to do something like this. So take this information and deploy it as needed or when needed when the time arises. All right, so there you have it. Now, when you really start to think about it, right, real precision locks that need really tight tolerances use brass, right? And so it's really no surprise that there's a lot of tolerance in these die cast style cam locks. And of course, I'll put links in the notes below for all the different products you can check out and purchase any that you like. And I'd really love to know, are you surprised by this information? That two different code series with two different space and depth information you can actually make work easily? Please let me know in the comments below and make sure that you include the hashtag LockBoss to automatically get entered in to win one of five free prizes we give away each week here on YouTube. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time. Take the same key. No. This uh, Hudson actually Oops. Shoot. I think I started over, I didn't.